So I'm not quite sure how it happened, but somehow people got the impression that I like having coffee while I'm in the woods. So, so when a viewer recently suggested I look at the Black Rifle Coffee Company, I thought, why not? Sure, I'll have a look and see what they have. Now I had seen the ads popping up on my YouTube feed and other feeds, my Facebook feed and the like, showing Black Rifle Company or coffee, and I'd looked at it and thought, yeah, that looks pretty good. I might just order some someday. But when my viewer suggested that I try their instant coffee, that's when I got interested because I didn't realize they made instant coffee. So I contacted them. You want to see what they gave me? Stand by. Okay, so I contacted the Black Rifle Coffee Company here in Canada, the Cana Canadian side of the company, because they are an American company. I'll tell you more about the company in a minute, because I think that's what's really important and worth knowing. I contacted them and told them I was interested in trying a sample of their instant coffee. Would they consider sending me a package of instant coffee that I could try? I'd also gave them a little bit of my background as somebody who likes coffee and likes to go in the woods and the fact that I had a police and paramedic background, which was apparently important to them because they're very much in support of first responders. Well, they did send me a package of the instant coffee and here it is right here and I'm going to show you some. In fact, I'm going to have some coffee today, not the instant, but they also sent me four packages of other types of coffee that they have and that is what I'm going to share with you today. Okay, so of the four types, and I'll tell you what they are, they did send me one called CAF, which is a hyper-caffeinated type of coffee. It has about 40% more caffeine than regular coffees. And I'll let you look these up, and I'll, I'll provide details and links below, of course, and I'll let you look them up to get more detail about the coffee itself. But they sent me the CAF coffee. They sent me the uh, Just Black, which is what I'm having today. They sent me the Murdered Out Coffee, and they sent me the Beyond Black. So, some nice choices, and I've had some of each. Today I'm having the Just Black because it's one of my, my favorite. The other ones are quite strong, and if you like a dark roast coffee, as I do, then I'm sure you'll like these. They are all a very high quality coffee, and we'll talk more about the coffee in a minute. But what I want to do is get set up, because I do have some water on to boil here, and I want to set up and show you what else they gave me. Okay, so today I am going to be grinding, so I brought my grinder with me. I need to put in about four teaspoons of coffee. I'm not going to be that precise today. I'm just going to pour some coffee in until I reach about four teaspoons. Now that, about three quarters of the way filled up the, uh, the outside of the grinder. So I'm going to grind this coffee, and it does take a minute or two, so I won't make you watch that whole thing, and I'll bring you back when the grinding is finished and we'll go from there. All right, so my coffee's ground and I'm just about to set up to make my coffee because my water is hot and ready to go. I wanted to show you what else they sent me. Very generously, they sent me one more thing, which is a GSI drip coffee filter. Now, that's known as a pour over coffee and I'm gonna set it up, but it's, this is the ultralight Java drip. Let me take it out of the box. I have not used this before, but I have used other devices that have some similarity. And basically, it's an ultra-fine mesh bag, believed to be of nylon, could be another material, with three legs that are designed to hook onto the edges of your cup and then be suspended over the cup. So let me set that up over my Quixa. Or a Kapilka, I guess. It's not the Quixa. So it's set up like this, and I'll be pouring the coffee in the filter bag and then doing a pour-over. And I'm going to explain what a pour-over is because a lot of people don't quite understand how to get the most out of a pour-over coffee design coffee maker, and uh, I'm going to share that with you. Even though this is the ultralight version, you can do a really nice cup of coffee with it. So give me a second to sit set up, and we'll do that. All right, so you can see where I have the coffee filter set up over top of my Kapilka. There's my coffee. I'm just going to pour that into the filter. My water is hot, just off of the boil, ready to be used. Now, the trick with pour over is that you start with just a little, a little bit of water. You don't pour all the water in, you just start with a little bit of water. All you really want to do is to get the coffee to soak up a little bit of water. So I probably two tablespoons is all I put in. I'm going to give that a second. Now some of it is draining through, but I'm just going to give that a second to, to cause the coffee to expand and hold itself in place. I guess that's probably the best way to describe it. 
And having done that, now I can begin the pour over in earnest. Now the way to do a pour over to get the most out of it is to actually pour around in a circle around the edges and let it work its way in. Don't pour all the water in, just pour a little bit at a time. Once you see the water coming above the level of the coffee, then you can stop and wait and just take your time. The art of the pour over is that you take your time and you get a better result. And I can see the coffee dripping through running through the bottom. Now if you're wondering how fine to grind your coffee for this type of uh, coffee maker, well it really depends on what you're using. Now this pour over is made of a mesh filter bag. It seems to be very fine but I've not used it before. So I have my coffee uh, just above fine. So it's not a coarse grind, it's not an ultra fine grind, but it is kind of fine. If I was using a paper filter I would probably use a ultra fine or at least a good fine grind because the more surface area of the coffee is that is exposed of course the more of the caffeine and flavor is extracted for the length of time that it's in contact with the water. So it looks like my cup is getting full. I can get a little bit more out of it. There we go. Okay, once that drains through, we'll uh, bring it back and we'll talk about just the Black Rifle Coffee Company. Skeeter's getting my coffee. Ha, <laughs> that's nice. I think that pour over is going to be a part of my regular carry. It won't replace the uh, AeroPress, but uh, you know, it's nice for an ultralight option. It makes a good cup of coffee. But of course, it's the coffee that we're talking about today, and it is the coffee that makes this cup good. So the Black Rifle Coffee Company was started in the United States by Iraq and Afghanistan veteran Evan Hafer. And Evan Hafer had a couple passions in life. One was coffee and one was firearms. So he combined those on returning from his tours of Afghanistan and Iraq to create the Black Rifle Coffee Company. So in the United States, Ethan is very much committed to the hiring of veterans, to give them work, and he understands just how much uh, the war took out of these people, so he wanted to offer work to as many of them as he can, and so he's very committed to the hiring of these veterans. Ethan is a lo coffee lover, and he develops a lot of coffee flavors, and uh, most of them tend to be on the dark side, I will tell you, but that's fine because that's the type of coffee I like is on the dark side. And Ethan's company is very much focused not only on veterans, but all first responders. So he has a soft spot in his heart for police officers, firefighters, paramedics, anybody who responds to emergencies, because he knows what it is to be in that line of work. So when I contacted the Canadian branch of the company, I spoke to them and asked them about the Canadian branch and what it is that they were doing. So the Canadian branch did inform me that they do have a couple of Canadian veterans hired. They are not anywhere near the quota that they want to be at. They want to hire more veterans to work in the Canadian branch. Their coffees do all come from the States. They're not roasting here in Canada as of yet, and I'm not sure if that is their plan. So they do have a couple of veterans, but in the meantime, what they're doing is they're working hard to support the veterans through the Warriors Heart Foundation. And the Warriors Heart Foundation is set up to support veterans, especially those who have suffered PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, something of which I know about from my police days. So they, that is one of the two charities. And the other charity is the Little Warriors. And the Little Warriors are children. Uh, I don't remember the details of that right now, but I am going to put links, of course, to both of these organizations in the show notes. So very worthwhile and I think that must make this company stand out from other companies is that the social conscience that they have in supporting those who have gone in harm's way and have suffered the consequences as well as the most vulnerable, the children in our society, really deserves a salute. <clears throat> So I did ask the representative from the Canadian company about the coffee itself. Uh, one of the things I wanted to know, I figured viewers might be interested in knowing, is whether or not it was a fair trade coffee. And the reply I got back is, is that it is an organic coffee sourced from a single firm, Nalta Multinational Corporation, so it meets all the requirements of fair trade, but they do not place the fair trade label on their bags because that is a step in a process that they have to go through, which costs money and takes time. So they decided that they would rather take the money and time that would go into acquiring the fair trade label and apply that money to their, to their uh, charities of choice. 
So again, I applaud them for that. So a high quality cup of coffee. And again, this is the just black. So it is a medium dark coffee. That's probably the best way to say it. Whereas the uh, murdered oat is a, <laughs> a very strong cup of coffee, as is the beyond black. And of course, incomparable is the CAF coffee. I'll let you uh, find out for yourself what the initials stand for, which is a hyper caffeinated cup of coffee. If you really need to get going in the morning, that's the one you want to <laughs> brew, but it's not one you want to have late in the afternoon or the early evening. So I want to send a thanks out to the Black Rifle Coffee Company. Oh, the instant. I should show you that. This is all I was looking for in the beginning. And they did send me this, but they did send me the other stuff as well. So the instant packets. Small packets of instant coffee. They call them single rounds. And uh, it's good coffee. It is, now I know you're wondering how does it compare against other coffees I've had, such as Starbucks. I'd say it's comparable. I wouldn't say it's neither better nor worse. It's comparable and a slightly different flavor. So it's not, of course, Instant is not my first choice, but Instant is one of those things that I do carry with me because sometimes you just have to be quick and don't have the time to make up a, a full proper cup of coffee. This is a good choice of coffee. I think probably if you're looking to buy the instant coffee, you may want to put together an order big enough to make the shipping worth your while because of course there is shipping that's going to be added to the price of the coffees. By the way, the prices range $14, $15, $17. I think there's even one that's a $20 uh, uh, range for, the, for their packages of coffee and their 340 gram packages. Again, I'll put some details below and links to where you can find out more about the Black Rifle Coffee Company. Okay, that's all I have for you today. It's getting to be a late afternoon. I've been on the trail for quite a while. I'm going to enjoy this cup of coffee, have a cliff bar with it, get packed up and start heading back to the road where my car is parked. And I just wanted to bring you this little video on the Black Rifle Coffee Company. If you're interested in trying them out, the links are provided below. And again, a thank you to the Black Rifle Coffee Company for sending me this. And until the next time, get out and explore. Take that path, less travel. It will make all the difference. Bye for now.